My name is Sanjay Gupta. I am a cardiologist in York, and today I wanted to talk to you about myocarditis, and specifically in relation to COVID-19 and COVID-19 vaccination. In this video, I will tell you about the following. What is myocarditis and how common is it? How frequently does myocarditis complicate COVID infection? Can vaccines for COVID cause myocarditis? Uh, what is the outcome of vaccine-related myocarditis? And should you have the vaccine if you have a history of myocarditis or you have indeed developed myocarditis after your first dose? So let's get started. Myocarditis and pericarditis are inflammatory conditions that affect the heart. Now, the heart muscle is known as the myocardium, and when there is inflammation of this muscle, then that is called myocarditis. Now, the heart muscle sits in a sac called the pericardium, so the pericardium is on the outside, and inflammation of the pericardium is called pericarditis. If the inflammation involves both the myocardium and the pericardium, then it is called myopericarditis. And the reason I'm telling you this is because some of the data that is coming out regarding COVID-19 and vaccinations may clump all of these three conditions under the label of myocarditis. The distinction is important because pericarditis, which is inflammation that is just limited to the sac in which the heart sits, is usually not dangerous, but can be very painful and uncomfortable to the patient and can take a while to resolve. Myocarditis, on the other hand, inflammation of the heart muscle itself is more important and can be dangerous because it is the muscle itself which is inflamed and that can cause the muscle to become more irritable and precipitate heart rhythm disturbances. And also for the heart itself, uh, the heart itself may weaken so that enough blood is um, not being pumped out to meet the body's requirements. And this is called heart failure. The commonest causes of myocarditis, pericarditis, or myopericarditis is usually some form of virus. And this is why these conditions are particularly pertinent to the coronavirus. Now, how common is myocarditis, just generally in the population? And it is estimated that in the UK, there are around about 2,000 hospital admissions for myocarditis every year. This is likely to be an underestimate because in some patients, uh, myocarditis may not cause major symptoms and therefore these patients may not even come to seek help and therefore they wouldn't be counted in these figures. In many of these patients, the myocarditis may just resolve spontaneously and the patient may even never know about it. The patients who have a more severe form of myocarditis will usually present with symptoms of either or chest pain, palpitation, breathlessness, fatigue. Occasionally, myocarditis may even present with dizziness and blackouts. How do we diagnose it? Well, the main test that we use for diagnosis of myocarditis is a blood test to look at cardiac enzymes called troponin. When these cardiac enzymes or troponins are elevated, then that indicates some form of damage to the heart. In addition, we may see changes on the ECG and we may see other elevated markers of inflammation such as elevated CRP levels. As cardiologists, the first thing we want to be sure of when someone presents with chest pain or breathlessness and they have elevated troponins is to ensure that the heart damage is not due to a heart attack. And we often do that by studying the heart arteries to make sure they're not blocked. If the arteries look healthy, uh, then and in the right patient, and usually the right patient is a patient who's generally young with increased markers of inflammation, we would then start thinking about the diagnosis of myocarditis. In these patients, we would then do an echocardiogram, an ultrasound of the heart, to assess whether the inflammation of the heart has impacted on the heart muscle enough to cause a reduction in the pumping ability of the heart. And if indeed the heart has been left weakened by this inflammation, then that indicates a more severe form of myocarditis. The weaker the heart, the more danger the patient is in, and the more aggressive monitoring and treatment they require. In the severest forms of myocarditis, our aims are to try and support the heart as best as we can by controlling any heart rhythm abnormalities and strengthening the heart by using medications such as beta blockers and ACE inhibitors. For the majority of patients, once the virus has gone, the heart function will stabilize 
and improve over a course of time, provided they can be supported well enough to ride out the acute phase of infection. Unfortunately, in some cases, patients can succumb to the weak heart caused by the myocarditis, usually through dangerous heart rhythm disturbances. And it is believed that perhaps up to 12% of sudden cardiac death in patients under the age of 40 could be attributed to myocarditis. Usually what happens here is that the patients may develop a myocarditis, they may not feel sick enough, so they may just feel a bit fluey, but the heart has been left quite weakened, then suddenly one day the heart decides to um, go into a funny rhythm and that then presents with a collapse and sudden death. Now, how is all this relevant to COVID-19? Well, studies suggest that up to 18% of patients who are hospitalized with COVID-19 have evidence of myocardial injury as measured by elevated troponins, i.e. They, they have evidence of a myocarditis. Remember, this is 18% of hospitalized patients who, by definition, will have a more severe form of infection to warrant hospitalization. There are some data to give us a guide as to how common myocarditis is in the whole population of patients who get COVID. And there was a study looking at particularly younger patients, and they estimated that the incidence of myocarditis in patients with COVID-19 was around about 500, around about 500 cases per million patients in the age group of 12 to 19 years. This equates to a percentage of 0.05%. I'm sure that these are not completely accurate data, but these are all the data that we have. There was a study that looked at uh, almost 1,600 athletes, and they concluded that based on symptoms, uh, the incidence of myocarditis was about 0.3%. And if you then used MRI scanning to look further in these patients, then you found that up to 2.3% of these patients had myocarditis. And then 40% of these patients, the myocarditis had completely resolved when you repeated the scan within four to 10 weeks. So the next question is, we know that myocarditis occurs in the general population. We know that COVID-19 can increase the risk of myocarditis. Can the vaccines that we use for COVID-19 also cause myocarditis? Now, there is some suggestion that the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines may be associated with a slightly higher incidence of myocarditis. As these particular vaccines have been used extensively in the US and Israel, most of the data comes from these countries. In the USA, 296 million doses of these mRNA vaccines have been given. This is by, this is till June this year. And of these, there were 1,226 reports of myocarditis after vaccination. In the US, they clump myocarditis, pericarditis, and myopericarditis under the term myocarditis. In any way, anyway, in those patients, the median age of those people who were affected was 26 years, and the time to onset was a median of three days after vaccination. In Israel, over a six-month period, there were 148 reports of myocarditis with about 5 million vaccinations. Again, it, was, it has been noted that the incidence of myocarditis seems higher in young men, and it's usually more so after the second dose. In the UK, where I work, there have been 149 cases of myocarditis and 129 reports of pericarditis with the Pfizer vaccine. There have been 82 reports of myocarditis and 140 reports of pericarditis with the AstraZeneca vaccine. And there have been 25 reports of myocarditis and 22 reports of pericarditis with the Moderna vaccine. So overall uh, rates are 4.3 cases per million doses of myocarditis, uh, per million doses, of myocarditis and 3.8 cases per million doses of pericarditis with Pfizer, 1.7 per million doses given of myocarditis and 3 per million doses given of pericarditis with AstraZeneca. And actually, that's not much higher than the background risk of getting myocarditis or pericarditis anyway. And 14.7 per million doses given of myocarditis and 13 per million doses uh, of pericarditis with Moderna. So it seems that of all of them, even though the risks are very low, 
it appears that the risks seem to be a little bit higher with Moderna and Pfizer rather than with AstraZeneca. The next question is, what is the outcome of vaccine-associated myocarditis? Now, there was an analysis of the patients in the US and they found that 96% of those patients who had myocarditis had to be hospitalized, but fortunately there were no deaths. In the European economic area, five deaths have been reported uh, from myocarditis caused by vaccination. However, these are generally older patients who had more comorbidities. So the general consensus is that the prognosis is good. However, we do not have enough data um, over a longer period of time to understand if there are any longer term issues, uh, such as a higher incidence of heart failure or heart rhythm disorders. So what does all this mean? Well, I think that what it means is that the data should not dissuade anyone who is considering the vaccine from having it. In fact, it is estimated that the risks of developing myocarditis from COVID itself are about five times greater than from receiving the vaccine. However, it is recommended that if you develop symptoms of chest pain, breathlessness, palpitations within two weeks of receiving the vaccine, then it is important to mention this to your doctor. And in an ideal world, you should have an ECG, blood tests for troponin and an ultrasound of your heart. Uh, if you develop myocarditis after the first dose, should you then have the second dose? Well, it depends on whether your doctors are convinced that it was definitely related to the vaccine that you received and not just an unhappy coincidence. If it is definitely related to the vaccine, then the current recommendations are that the second dose be deferred until we have results from further ongoing research studies. What about if you've had myocarditis in the past and now you're considering the vaccine? Should you still have the vaccine? And at the present, the recommendation is yes. A previous history of myocarditis is not a contraindication to having the vaccine. And there is at present no evidence to suggest that there is a higher chance of recurrence in this setting. So I hope you found this useful. There's a really nice summary of all the data on the gov.uk website, which is where I got most of my information from. Once again, thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for your wonderful support. Uh, I'm more appreciative than I can uh, profess. Thank you so much. All the best.